Hey folks, so I spent uh, quite a bit at auction recently, uh, basically more than I've spent in quite a while at any single auction. Uh, this time around, I ended up spending $1,300 at auction. Um, so yeah, a chunk of change. Um, got some good stuff though, so that's... Uh, all right, so I'll show you what I got. Uh, some of the more interesting stuff is a little later in the video because it's in another box, but uh, I'll show you some of this stuff anyway. We got several tins, um, solder seal, motor master, which is Canadian tire. Canadian tire stuff is actually getting collectible now. So there's a brake fluid can from Canadian tire. Um, got some quartz. Multi Moto Master Supreme. I uh, got three of them. So some full ones there. And then a 100% pure paraffin. That one's kind of a neat can. Um, same grade year round. Also Canadian Tire. Uh, a Croc I think I paid a little too much for considering condition. Of course I didn't get to preview the sale. Uh, but small wing, it is real. I what I'm doing here, there's fake ones. There's blank crocs that people have put stamps on, and then clear coated. So I run my fingernail over top, and if the, it shatters or the or not shatters, but flakes off, then you know it's a fake. So just let you know about that. Um, this one has got. It doesn't ring for some reason. I'm a little concerned about that. But uh, it's got some very old chipping. Looks like the this is factory here on top. On top of this edge here is all factory. But uh, I think I paid about a hundred and a quarter for that. So not bad. I'll still make money on it. But uh, yeah, $125 plus buyer's premium. So, anyway, I'll do okay. Uh, I've got some more MotorMaster cans. Uh, liquid transmission, automatic transmission fluid. Liquid transmission, I'm not sure what that's about. Anyway, uh, another automatic transmission fluid. We've got another MotorMaster su Super Oil. Again, a 70s one. <clears throat> got another Supreme. And got an outboard motor oil as well. So, yeah, and uh, another Motormaster Super Oil. So that's all right. And then we also got uh, some, got a riveter. That's what these things are. You'll see these a lot. Uh, not a lot of value, unfortunately. But they came with two seals so two uh, ones from a barrister this one here I think um, or for a company anyway they're embossing seals they're decorative but there's sometimes some more value in whatever the seal is sometimes so uh, there's one of these is from Brandon which I have a customer for so there's I think it's this one here that's from Brandon and it's for a barrister, I think. Uh, yeah, this one's for a uh, barrister lawyer. So that one will be probably sold with an email. And we've got a couple drive-in speakers. Two different types from 20th Century. I'm not sure. It's not 20th Century Fox, I don't think. But uh, I think that's just the brand of, of uh, drive-in speaker. And, um, oh, we got another grease can from Canadian Tire as well. Transitional can, 1970s. And, let's see. Then, now we've got some buckets. Um, these are fire buckets. As you can see, fire only. And they've got a rounded bottom. And that's so they didn't uh, get pilfered for things because they're not that usable for anything else other than water 
Um, they used to hang up. Let's see, there's a rounded bottom here. And they used to hang from a hook in a building so you could uh, use them for uh, putting up fires, obviously. And the second one, of course, another fire only. And then we've also got a brass bucket as well. Not sure quite how old it is. Um, it looks, it's got some age. I would think 1890s, something like that. Maybe, maybe older. Not sure. But, uh, yeah, well made and a good bucket, but. And they cost me 30 bucks for the three of them. So did pretty good there. Each fire bucket's worth 65 maybe. I think these ones are, the condition's not quite there, so they'll be priced at about 45 a piece. And then, got a advertising clock here. Unfortunately, it's got a, um, they packed it up nice. Uh, it's got a battery movement. That's a replacement, I think. Um, I think there's supposed to be an electric movement here, but I'm not positive. Um, this one looks like it's been on there quite a while, and I don't see any silhouette from the uh, electric movement that should have been here. It says an electric clock indoor use only 110 volts, so yes, there is an electric movement missing from this. So, yeah. And I paid up for this. I paid a hundred and some dollars for this. Um, I should be able to still double my money, but uh, we've got, like I said, I've got a hundred and some dollars into it. A uh, hundred and ten dollars. So I should be able to get two fifty. Still, even in that condition. Oh, I'm being paged. So, I just got a phone call, and it was spam, or a rather uh, a scammer-type phone call, uh, a local number, but it was a Visa Security Alert, which was BS. Anyway, back to stuff. So, anyway, still a nice clock. Um, and then, got a railway lamp. Uh, eat with the ETW chim, uh, shade on it or globe on it. Uh, ET right, I think is probably it or else there was a line that was ETW, but I don't know for sure. Um, I think it's probably meant to be ET right, but I don't know for sure, but it's a CPR tall globe. So I'm going to have to find another globe for this possibly because I think I can sell this globe separate. But we'll see. Uh, but that was a good lamp. That one cost me all of, let's see, cost me all of $50. So that's, I can sell the frame alone for probably a hundred, hundred and a quarter. So I did pretty good on that. I uh, got a CPR kerosene can right there. Uh, marked. CPR up on the shoulder here. Canadian Pacific Railway, if you didn't know what CPR was. And I've got some expensive stuff coming up here. So um, let's see, like this particular can. This is a rare Ford Model T era tire repair kit tin. Now I have a chunk of change into this one. Guess how much I paid for this little tin. And you'll probably be surprised. But it is Model T era. It is rare. Um, but I've got uh, $135 into this. But this can is worth probably $275 in this condition. In nicer condition, it's worth a lot more. So... Um, if I'm wrong with that, I'll correct it on the screen. But uh, we're looking at it about 275, I think. So yeah. Anyway, good can. Um, yeah, that is the correct lid. I was concerned there for a second, but it is the correct lid. So yeah, that was an expensive buy. 
That's why it added up so fast. And some of the stuff cost me a fair chunk. Um, then I got some a few deals. I got four of these for about oh ten dollars or five dollars or something like that. Um, yeah, um, for six dollars I got four of these. Oh, Singer sewing machine tins, and I don't know if they're the same. Oh, they're different. One's thirty cents. One's thirty-nine cents. One's thirty-nine cents. Might be a little different. Looks the same. And we've got another one that is a 30 center. So we've got four, four with a couple different ones here. So that's kind of cool. A little bit different. And then I got a, this is a bargain. This was a, this bargain of the sale. <laughs> I think this is out of a, a uh, car clock. That cost me a mega bucks. Big dollars it cost me. Uh, it was literally one dollar. So yeah, it cost me all of a dollar. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what it is, is a car clock. It would have been an inset in the dash. Something like that. But uh, would have had a mount in the dash. Unfortunately, don't have the bracket. But I'm pretty sure that's what it's for. You see it's got a ridge here. So I think that's what it's for. Pretty cool for a dollar. That was a bargain. I don't think anybody realized what it was. So that was a deal. And then I've got a couple other, three, four other expensive items coming up here. Kind of cool stuff coming up. And... This, this is, I'm going to leave the most expensive item right to the end for you. It's in this bag here. So we're going to leave it to the end. And I also got, uh, oh, what's this? I don't even remember what this is. What's this? Okay, I don't know, guys. Oh, this is a, uh, oh. <laughs> this isn't expensive, this is reasonable. Um, got a fire extinguisher, King fire extinguisher. I think it cost me $15, something like that. So that wasn't too bad. And with it, I got a thermometer that is just a neutral advertising or not really an advertising thermometer but it's just a decorator metric thermometer from the 70s this is kind of funny it's for a Canadian the Canadian Celsius or metric system advertising the metric system or celebrating the metric system but it's made in the USA so <laughs> we couldn't even make it here yeah anyway I don't know what I'll, I can do with it. It's, it does have an original bulb in the back, so I might save it just for that bulb. That might be the thing. Might have to keep it just for the spare bulb. But it didn't cost much anyway. So anyway, back to the expensive stuff. I got this sign as well. So, the enamel sign. I paid, I think, about 165 for this, this uh, Atlas battery sign. Let me move a few things here. So, yeah, I paid 165 for that. But that's still probably good for 400 so I'm probably doing all right there. Advertising has gone up quite a bit in the past while. So that's pretty cool. And... We got one more thing here. Oh, this wasn't expensive. It was a deal. It was a bargain. Uh, I think this is an RCAF recruitment poster. 
So that's kind of cool. World War II era. Get rid of that rubber band that's kind of damaging it a little bit. So that's pretty cool. That was good. That would cost me pretty reasonable. Um, it costs all of um, all of oh geez can't find it here ah five dollars <laughs> so i think that's probably a 65 dollar poster all day long if not more could be more um plus i got some um, military magazines with that impact so they're confidential magazines type office of the assistant chief of air staff intelligence so Maybe stuff that's not necessarily available to the general public, but was published within the military. So I'll check those. They could be worth something. Probably 10 a magazine or something like that, I suspect. Now, the most expensive thing I bought. Okay. Want your guesses in the, in the uh, description below. How much did I pay for this? So full can of oil from Riga, um, and uh, I paid up for this. So if you guessed four hundred and forty dollars, that's what I paid for this oil can. But it is worth about nine hundred, so we're doing just fine there. But $440, that was my most expensive purchase in this batch. Call me crazy, but that's kind of the money it's it's worth. In mint condition, or near mint condition, this is a $1,500 can. So, in this condition, it's not mint. It's probably an eight, eight and a half, something like that. It's, like I said, about $900. So, we did fairly well. This is an 1890s can should clean up a little bit more I'll clean it up very rare can though so yeah anyway so that's what I got folks thanks for watching please be sure to like and subscribe and check out our other videos on antiquing picking thrifting scrapping etc take care folks